Hey gang, I got an offer for you today from LinkedIn. As business-to-business marketers, your needs are unique. B2B buying cycles are long and your customers face incredibly complex decisions. Isn't it time you had a marketing platform built specifically for you? LinkedIn ads empower marketers with solutions for you and your customers. LinkedIn ads allow you to build the right relationships, drive results, and reach your customers in a respectful environment. On LinkedIn, you have direct access to build relationships with decision makers. Of the 875 million users on the network, 180 million are senior level executives, 10 million are C-level executives. You will also be able to drive results with targeting and measuring with their tools built specifically for B2B. And best of all, they work. Audiences exposed to brand messages on LinkedIn are six times more likely to convert. LinkedIn ads also rank number one for security, community, and ad experience as part of the Business Insider's Digital Trust Study. Make B2B marketing everything you can be and get $100 credit. It's $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash MPN to claim your credit. It's linkedin.com slash MPN. P-N. Terms and conditions apply. Entrepreneurs Enigma is a podcast for the ups and downs of entrepreneurship. So the wins and the fails that we all face being entrepreneurs and how we learn from adversity. Every week I talk to a different entrepreneur with a story to tell. I'm Seth Goldstein. Come with me on the journey. This is Entrepreneurs Enigma. Let's get started. Hey, everybody, welcome to another edition of the Entrepreneur's Enigma podcast. I am, as always, Seth. With me, I am so stoked about this. I have Vinny Podestivo. Did I do that right? Nailed it. Oh, yes. Because <laughs> you, you one of the Italian names that could be like, wherever you put the slowels, it could be completely different from how you say it the other way. And I was practicing on LinkedIn beforehand, pressing your, um, your little... Um, like how you say your name oh the phonetic yeah the phonetic thing i was like and i was like i got it and then we got on the call and i completely butchered it before the show and I was level like, two oh. super mario i like to say it goes vinnie potestivo vinnie potestivo <laughs> oh Potestivo. it does <laughs> <It's a little laughs> chime. yeah that was a like, shout out to all those 80 babies who listen to the oh, 70s yeah. babies who am i kidding by the way who are out there who understand the pain that we went through our the pain in our thumbs oh my god <laughs> that seriously. we went through playing oh atari god. and ColecoVision. <laughs> oh my god those were worse than nintendo yeah exactly off to a so, great start but i love a great here. start Thank exactly you. i love it love it love it love it so Vinny. You have been on and you've helped MTV. You've been on A and E. You've been on TLC before it was crazy. <laughs> I don't know what TLC is anymore, but that kind of thing. But you've done a lot in the production space. Have you ever been on the camera side, or are you mostly behind the scenes? You've discovered quite a few people too. Yeah. Thank you for that and for noticing yeah. that. I'm a little I'm behind the mic now. So, yeah. I mean, I show up now. For a long time yeah. I put people before me. P- coping mechanisms turn superpowers, mm-hmm. you know. I Absolutely. Yeah. Some damage as a kid. Always always led with kindness and empathy and it was always other people's first and then I would make a cake for them out of the kindness Aww. of my heart, you know, try to yeah. f- do something unique and then I'd be like, "Well, if I did it for them, now I can do it for me." And so Damn much straight. of what I got to experience was just what opportunities as I saw for other people yeah. there for me. Yeah. I started in casting in high school. Wow. I got scouted to come into the city and audition for a Bronx tale. So I didn't get that role, but oh. that was the first time a casting director pointed me out and they came to my school in Tottenville in Staten Island and they were looking for, you know, I, I think probably the description said, look for an Italian kid. <laughs> well, you can go for uh, Italian and Parastivo. So. I mean, right? <laughs> Serious? I'm the only Vinny I know, by the way, in this industry, but still, that's my own gripe. <laughs> really? There's not a lot of Vinnies? I mean, for some reason, my cousin Vinny is the thing I hear the most, but other than that, that's not even... <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> Vin Debona, like, you know, the guy who created America's Funniest Home Video. That's like yeah. the only other Vin I know of that... That's um, weird. Man, man, did I look at that name as a kid. That That's like, yeah. you ask me my favorite show, Humanity. That's my oh my god, <laughs> Bob Saget, may you rest in peace. Yeah, 
yeah, yeah. Oh, he was a funny guy. He was from Abington. I'm down in Philadelphia. All right. He's a Philadelphia boy. Yeah. So yeah. He's got that cool. sharp, that sharp East Coast sense of humor. I see. Oh, that, my that God. Dry, yeah, rye. Yeah. <laughs> the enigma part of it. Sure. Absolutely. You don't know yeah. what's happening next. We're the mysterious piece that's coming out. Sure. Yeah. So you spent a lot of time in casting. Yeah. And you found a lot of people to put in front of the camera. And I'm not sure if you're able to talk about who those people were or not. Yeah. Do you want to reveal some of the big ones? <laughs> yeah. As a casting coordinator at MTV, I got to be in the room and, and audition Beyonce for her first acting role, which is pretty neat. Oh, that's um, all. That's all. It's Beyonce. You know, just a little. Just a, queen. Uh, just a little. I mean, she didn't win, you know, an Academy Award, you know, not that. MTV films it, qualified it, her for that at that point, but but it's um, still Beyonce for crying out loud. She's like Madonna. She's got one name. I well, you know, at that time, Destiny's Child had just gone from five women to three, so there's immense sensitivity by the network oh, about what happened next yeah. with Destiny's Child. It was a hard pass. That oh, uh, was it? Yeah, she was a hard pass, but it was um, a relationship with Tina Knowles and access to to Matthew Knowles and. To wow. that MTV Times Square studio that really let us, you know, go straight in for the kill and have a direct relationship with yeah. these people. And I, you always knew Beyonce had tremendous skill and Kelly yeah. and Lisa, like you always knew they were surrounded by skill. But I remember Carmen and Hip Hopera. I remember the conversations of uh, this is a breakout role for somebody. And uh, and it was it was a, a risky move for the group. To destabilize yeah. them, you know, they didn't, mm -hmm. Justin hadn't gone on his solo career. So like, I mean, they were, you know, the, they, in a lot of they ways, were, they were groups. minimizing they were groups. her. Yeah, exactly. And what this did was we got to bring Mandy Moore to the television. Oh, that's, that's what I heard on Annie's podcast. Shout out to. Oh Jimmy yeah. And Annie. Shout out to Annie. Annie Ruggles. Yes. Oh. Queen of real podcast vibes, by the way. Oh my go God. Listen. Check out that podcast. After yeah. you listen to this podcast, yeah. go listen to Too Legit to Quit because she is. A nut. We yeah, Annie. absolutely. I can't help but give her shout outs. So Mandy Moore. Yeah, neat, right? It was fun. because she sat down to earth. I mean, because uh, this is us. So I think like she's had breakout roles, but I sure. think Tangled. Big girl, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I think her big girl role was like, if she had the singing, is she the acting? She had a lot of nickel sparks acting, which is right, like, right, I, right, like, right, I right, writes right. gold constantly. Right, right. He writes a book. And then <laughs> Straight for the heart. It's, it's, already, it's already been an option for a movie before he even has the cocktail uh -huh. contents written. That guy is like mm -hmm. insane. Then she did This Is Us. And I mean, like, holy moly. Right. It's a combination of all of it, though, right? Like in, in all of those ages of Rebecca and all of those circumstances that she's in. Especially, by the way, now that Mandy is actually a mother, you know, as yes. of now to two, which is super cool to think of the process. You know, from Mandy, I learned so I learned how to show up for myself, how to ask oh. questions. I mean, I was there. Fifteen-year-old Mandy asked a lot of questions at a point in time where everyone thought they needed to know what they needed to, know, what they know. You know they thought they they yeah. couldn't. She's show. always been humble. Yeah, and and quick to ask for help, and quick to, quick to collaborate with people she trusted, and. That's Love a tremendous it. skill set to have learned from someone who, mm -hmm. you know, and she was always present. Uh, I remember in like 98, 99, when we first met her, 15 years old, barely, I think she was just getting ready to go on tour with the Backstreet Boys, like just oh, about yeah. to have her first thing. First thing. And, um, you know, Jessica Simpson couldn't read cue cards and be herself and be present with all the noise of media the same way yeah. that Mandy could. But Jessica thrived in reality TV. And that relationship <laughs> panned out, thrive. you know. Yeah, I guess you can thrive in that. It's well, well, when MTV you... MTV did pioneered that with Real World and Road Rules. And I'm a nineties you know, kid, so yeah. yeah. And in the, the music video too, they created they mm. created a platform for music videos. They created a platform yeah. for reality TV before for... YouTube kids. Are you Z's <laughs> before YouTube? If you can imagine, there was MTV. That's it. In fact, yeah. they say they say this is what they say. YouTube really got on the map for the MTV generation uh, right around Janet Jackson's Nipplegate thing went on. Right. And that's like a really that, yeah. pivotal moment. Everyone wanted media. to see the nip. Everyone they, wanted it, to see the nip. It rocked our network. It changed It changed how the nipple could be seen on national television. It changed how global How many fines were thrown out on that one from the FCC? 
Do oh you, my God. Do I you can know? Only imagine. Do you know the answer? <laughs> uh, do you know the answer? How many fines? Yeah, we got fined for every market that that hit. Do you know how many markets there are in America? <laughs> quite a bit. Isn't that a overall? Yeah, thing? quite a bit. Quite. Yeah, exactly. Quite. I don't even know now how fragmented it is, but I remember seeing a lot of zeros, and I think it was fifty thousand per market. Um, oh, that's so. painful. Oh, yeah, especially considering. It's you just know, a boob. What it what it represented and and, and the unfortunate yeah, you know, yeah. made made too much up out of boobs. And Facebook's <laughs> even better, to the credit, they're they're laying a nipple out now. They're finally saying just eh, hell with it. Yeah. It's a boob. Yeah, we'll leave that one alone. But it's yeah, a, it was a it was a moment. It's a, I mean, it's also, you know, the a, a woman's body in a in a strange way that was being awkwardly oh my God. Yeah. utilized at a point in time where women often succumb to or put in awkward sexual situations. And I, I think that's why I'm so empowered to help business owners, people who identify as talent, like us creatives yeah. who are capable of making content Yeah, to, or, or at least think we're capable. In my case, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> Jessica I'm... Simpson, you could be great at it or bad at it. You could still be a star at it. It doesn't matter. You know, exactly. <laughs> people show up for the train wreck and have the time the train wrecks better than the actual reality. Yeah. That's the truth. Actually. That's the real truth. So you worked at MTV. And you've helped a bunch. Of, you're now you're a consultant, right? And your podcast host, you help people with podcasting. I think one of the biggest tricks you taught me via any's podcast was that put yourself on, in IMDb because oh, you yeah. can. Yeah, I did, and then it got too annoying to update. I was like, it, it, I'm like, yeah, uh, forget this. Uh, this visibility, uh, I can't deal with all this visibility. Because oh, no. uh. no, every every change you make, how to get be like they're very very tight. Yeah, they're worse. They're worse than Wikipedia, in my opinion. <laughs> it's it is a publicly traded company that leverages it's, Amazon, its identity yeah. on uh, data. It and is. Also, it is. I get yeah. And it's also, a neat trick though. But what Seth is referring to is yes, podcasters so now can uh, get credit on yeah. IMDb, and credit That's is something wild. we can give and get and get discovered from and share. Yes. And what he's pointing out is that there's a sort of a an old. <laughs> form that you have to fill out you have to keep refreshing and refreshing i think some of it is because it's quality controlling against botting it's actually it's really hard to botting. automate it's also, it's also against adhd <laughs> <laughs> yeah you gotta I'm really want I'm this almost... credit to get it yeah i'm there with you man i also have been struggling with that my whole life so you really I, I need to have there. this credit to, to get i'm to actually... on it <laughs> I think I, I put and I did and what I did is I put Annie on as my first well, as one of the shows. Cool. But I also I think people should start doing IMDb when they start their show, not a hundred episodes in because under hundred episodes in is a little daunting when it refreshes every five seconds. Yeah, it only happens once. With IMDb, yeah. you can only give yourself credit for something that has already aired. That's actually yes. a really big part of it. So like what I you're bringing that. up is it's hard to front load. Like most of us like to sort of get things prepared. Yeah. I want to point out though, on every TV show I've ever worked on that books celebrities or even the yeah. late night shows, Ellen, Jimmy, 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 mm -hmm. all them. There's someone <laughs> Ellen, on that Jimmy, team. Jimmy, Jimmy. Yeah, right, all those. There's someone, Jennifer now, there's someone on those teams whose responsibility it is to go the day oh. of to enter that information. That's that's how that. how quickly it impacts search results. So I'm seeing, you know, when when Mandy Moore was on my podcast, it was great to get to give her credit because you see the last podcast she was on was my podcast for a while. Then when yeah. she went on a press tour for This Is Us, I noticed the same day because you know it's it's not automated. It's very not automated. Be putting in, yeah. The same day she's on the Today Show. That's that credit. So that, that credit pushes mine down and that next credit pushes. So we're all fighting for visibility on yeah. discoverability. Um, I think I, what, I think it's very weird because we're so used to automated right now. Everything's yeah. quick, 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 quick. And IMDB is not quick. We're going to take a quick break, hear from our sponsors and get right back to the show. Hey there, it's Jason Falls. If your company or maybe one of your clients sells to marketers, you look for advertising channels that guarantee business marketers are paying attention, right? Let me introduce you to the Marketing Podcast Network. You're listening to it right now. It's a network of podcasts all about marketing. So 100% of MPN's audience are marketers. Reach them by advertising on the Marketing Podcast Network. Learn more and find our media kit at marketingpodcasts.net. So beware of automation. You know, Pod, yeah. Podpage and Podchaser allow for some automation in the SEO world. 
and both yeah. of those platforms and they're solid platforms, mm-hmm. for, especially if you're in podcasting, then, you know, pod chaser and you know, pod page mm-hmm. pod page actually creates a website for you that a web page for you that gets indexed and it helps you, but we blank and it's there. You have a website that actually looks decent within like five minutes. And it's like, wow. Thinking from a guy who does web design, that yeah. is impressive. But impressive. but it doesn't have the impact that IMDB has, which no. has a one hundred percent domain authority ranking. And when IMDB, which is owned by Amazon, and when it tells Google, wait, it's not owned, or is it still owned by Amazon? It is owned by Amazon. It's still owned. Yeah, now it's owned by Amazon. When Am- when an Amazon company tells Google that a photo exists, a video exists, mm-hmm. also in December of twenty twenty two. They actually, and I've been on IMDb for over 20 years. My whole, my whole TV career is based on getting credits and it's yeah. always been self or actor, actress. They actually created a new job title called podcaster. It's a metadata point that I'm really excited that yeah. exists. They see our content yeah. as valuable. That's, That's why it shows awesome. up in new searches. So, um, That's I, all right. I'm going to dive back in. I'm going to take some more, some right. more pills and jump dive back in. <laughs> oh I understand the pain caffeine. point. I'm talking to a few people actually about, I've always offered it as a service to my like private clients yeah. and group. I've yeah. always offered it as a service because the reward, I, it just, the rewards are so inherent mm-hmm. that it, it actually hurts me to not help you get it. Cause I know that it's going to show up in your Google search results. If you have a mm-hmm. Google alert for your name, I know it's yeah. going to show up the next day and how much that matters. It does take upkeep, but Hey, if you have a, a monthly strategy to spend an hour <laughs> updating your things, oh, you got, I only got to do it 12 times a year, but what, what a cool man. thing to get to tell your guests, Hey, you'll be on my podcast and I'm going to get your name on IMDB, the p- same That's place where every Spielberg and Scorsese mm-hmm. and Oprah Winfrey, yeah. you know, and Mandy Moore, Mandy yeah. Moore, and Seth, Vinny. you know, and how Vin- you doing? Vinny, yeah. All right. Yeah, I like that. And Joey. Yeah. And Joey. <laughs> how you doing? How you Annie, doing? Annie, and Annie. you know, oh, Annie's on there, yeah. and we get to not just, it's not just about getting credits. It's about giving them like that's, mm-hmm. you that's know, big. you, Seth, if someone volunteers to do art assets or maybe help, there are ways that we can thank them, but giving someone a credit on your show that's going to show up in search results, this is a really cool networking bargaining trip that I've been able it to is. use and leverage. It is. As All right. More you convinced me. I'm going back. I'm going Hello. to go back. I'm okay. going to sit down one day. I'll, do, I'll be there with the you. Let's, I'll spend some time with you. We can do some work hours and, and body proxy. Uh, a big co-working space. Yeah. I'll it's not easy. I feel oh you though. I'm, it's clunky for me. So don't think that, you know. I, I was actually <laughs> shot to how clunky it was. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. but it's clunky for a reason, I think. Yep. I, I, think so I think so too. I think it's, it's supposed to be that way. So you have to really think about how you're going to do this. And there's a lot of Seth Goldstein's out there, too, it turns out, <laughs> in, in the entertainment space. I had to make sure I'm like, am I already in here? No, that's like five other Seth Goldstein's. I'm a new one. So they're like, yeah, right. I'm so lucky. Anyhow, I'm the so only Vinny Potestivo I know of so far. What's the best thing about being an entrepreneur? Oh, um, so I, uh, that's a, oh, I love this question. I think that when I was in a business where I was offering service, so th- I, uh, I think I turned into an entrepreneur a couple of years a- after having a business where mm-hmm. I was in casting and casting was a service. I wouldn't identify myself as an entrepreneur when yeah. all I do is offer casting as a service. When you offer casting as a service or development as a service, you're lucky if your clients yeah. become your friends because the work piece comes first in the funnel you don't have full control over. Yeah. I think as an entrepreneur, my favorite part is now my friends are my clients. It's, it's a big difference. Yeah. And I get to... I get to dig deep into the relationships I've had for 20, 25 years. Some of them I'm even getting to feature on my podcast. Wait, that's we, fun. Yeah. And I think for you is like, you say, hey, I'm having Mandy on the show. And you're a first name basis with her. And it's like that. It's not Mandy Moore. So I'm having my buddy Mandy on the show. And everyone's like, holy crap, Vinny. And you're like, yeah. it's just Mandy. Yeah. It's, a, it's just it's Mandy. A, yeah, right. It's just like, but everyone's just, just like, wonderful. I, by the way, I get starstruck with my friends. Don't, don't, don't let me yeah. fool you. Like I'm all like cool, smooth operator. I am. <laughs> I get to sit in the audience, just like you sitting at couch yeah. with Mandy, because the emotional journey, I'm a little bit like, yeah. I got to watch in, in clusters because I'm a snotty kind of crier and I, re- yeah. <laughs> I really go there. But I was aware of Mandy's presence. And what I didn't Mm. want on my podcast was for it to be seen as a celebrity podcast Mm. that got celebrities to share their information. What I wanted, and I love that you're sort of picking up on this, what I wanted people to see 
was the capability we have, the networking opportunities we have to build longstanding relationships with the people we're working mm -hmm. with. So I think in the beginning of my podcast, I spent about 45 minutes with Mandy, like as one episode and it was like yeah. a longer convo. And it felt, I felt a lot about like her journey through her career yeah. moving forward. What I did to have her back is have much more myopic topics, but stay focused on like one topic for 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. This way, this way y'all can understand like how we make decisions and not get caught up in like what made her, her. Yeah. And I felt like I was in a unique position to be able to have some of those friends come That's back. So great. for me, the hard work was getting my first bout of asks out there. The easier yeah. part was going back to those same friends and being like, can we do it again? <laughs> yeah. I'm Not always me. shocked about you like to say you're not a big deal. And I asked you on the show, I was like, this guy is a big deal. This guy has been at MTV and all that. <laughs> One of the things I found is that as a journalist, being a professional journalist for a while there, I had to put the side the starstruckness that's a mm. word mm -hmm. and it depends on the same way they put the skirts on the same way as everybody else they just have a little bit more exposure yeah you know it's they have a little visible. more exposure out there exactly more visible so here's, a, here's another question what keeps you up at night <laughs> that's a great question oh <laughs> you're good you're good um what's next yeah. is I, i'm a big fan of innovation and I have to be mindful of the areas that I innovate in because I'm not doing something that's not sustainable. I'm doing something that I'm hoping to write an SOP for, a standard operating procedure for, yeah. to either hand it to my team to do it over and over again, daily, weekly, monthly, annually, or someone else's team to do so. Yeah. So I'm constantly in the mindset of the creator. When I was at MTV, I got exposed to creating with tremendously different types of energy. Back. Diddy on making the band versus Ashton on punk versus Sharon on these are very different Completely energies. Though. Oh my God. Very different type. You know, I've done about 200 guest podcasts now and every podcast different. Um, yeah. And I love that part of the creative, the creative market. And I love that I don't show up with a set of tools mm -hmm. and I don't tell you how to build the wall. I'm like, what kind of wall are we making? Is it a brick wall, exactly. water wall, a mud wall, a people wall? Like what, what kind of, yeah. what are the materials we got here? And I've, I've learned how to help people get things out of their head. First and foremost, mm, all, hard, all yeah. of that said, get it out of your head onto paper. Yes. And this is where I was at, at when I was in school in 95 to 99, I was in the computer club and I, well, I started, yeah. you know, in the computers, I worked in the computer center and fixing people's papers, the font, you know, getting it to oh be two, and they'd be like, don't you hate it? And I'm like, what? I'm like, I see how everyone creates. I see the, I see all the guys in finance using serif fonts and I you see oh. all the women in, you know, communications using sans serif. I see these differences in the tonality of text. And so the line spacing, too. the line spacing, the white <laughs> right now, it's like the white space. They'll call it even in advertising. Yeah, that turned into show pitches and one sheets and all of these things that I never thought, by the way, that I would I thought I was a bad writer. So I also was very happy to work with reality TV where I ask yeah. a question, you give me the answer and that's what I have to work with. Like I like <laughs> that it. part. Yeah. And for 20 years, my job was to wow. interview people like we're doing right now. Yeah. One on one, like we're doing day by day, hour by hour. And then I would go back to my desk at MTV with my two VCRs and I would pause record VCRs, and yeah. edit, you know, edit tape using VHS and horrible quality. And when I wanted to make an impact in podcasting, I thought I'd do the same thing. I'm hyper focused on Podmatch. It's a small community of about 14,000 podcasters, hosts yeah. and guests that truly care about each other. That's mm -hmm. love is the alchemy. Love and empathy are the tools that like I need to be creating with these. There's enough content out in the world and ideas out in the world that yes. don't need my help to create them. But what yeah. I lead with is empathy and humor. And those I think are what a lot of our show, my shows that I've been a part of the franchises while and out as a franchise, I help bring to yeah. TV, the challenge on MTV mm -hmm. is a chat, you know, is a, is a franchise that I help bring to TV. These are that's awesome, impactful shows, but funny and shareable. Yeah. And, uh, but learning and how and Nick Cannon too. creates, yeah. Yeah. you know, I'll never forget. Nick pitched that show. Nick Cannon pitched the show to MTV. MTV said, no, he was dating Christina Milian at the time. It was Christmas yeah. break. They went away to Christmas break. They actually 
Nick called up a friend who had a, um, a comedy club that wasn't being used during the break. He went in, shot a little tape, came back to MTV and said, this is what I'm talking about. Now, now can we do it? And then MTV said yes. So like even learning to invest in myself, to bet on myself, now that I saw someone like Nick Cannon who had to do yeah. it, who was like a star. He was a Nickelodeon bona fide star. I mean, like this yeah. is, he was a box office name by the time he got to MTV. Yeah. And still people didn't trust him on Wild and Out until he had to show the vision. Here's what it's like me versus another celebrity. Christina Milian was the other celebrity in the the other captain. So you saw two people, two teams, and it suddenly became real. And that's um, awesome. When you see people like them having to bet on themselves, Beyonce, by the I'll never forget the label didn't know that Beyonce was good. It wasn't allowed on her schedule. I wasn't allowed to send her a car because the car had to be tracked through security a different way that the label. Would. Oh, so wow. it was a very sort of secretive Ooh, uh, audition. And yeah, it was because it really subterfuge. It, yeah, if it if it if it wasn't going to happen, it shouldn't have happened. But if it if it was going to happen, then it was too late. <laughs> and that's it. exactly what uh, all the stories. That yeah, that's what so. Happened. What is the most imp- what is the most important thing to carry with you all the time? People, our connections with each other, our responsibility to each other. B- before I think of creating something, before I think of sharing a great idea, I responsibly sit down and figure out how would I support it. Um, That's awesome. I think that networks are doing that now mm-hmm. with 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 respect to what's happening on television. There's a lot more network participation and responsibility of what's getting shot. It's not. It's no longer about picking the best of the worst. It's about ensuring <laughs> being inclusive, yeah. not exclusive of content. And I think that yeah. that's, that's a major change from our publicly traded companies that mm-hmm. are commissioning these shows, by the way. Also yeah. a lot more responsibility from the producers who now have maybe apps on their own media apps. And we now see the, the way that we can leverage content in the mm-hmm. media world. So it's I'm, wild. I'm hyper-focused in helping business owners and individuals, independents like us create. Yeah. And the reason why I push podcasting is because it's easier than mm-hmm. a book or a speaking tour or any, that yeah. for, as far as I know, because I'm trying you, to write a book right now and it's not, easy. it's hard. Yeah. Oh for me, God. it's, and, and, um, I would say it this way with AI that's out and chat GPT, you know, yeah. we can turn to some text to support us, but like, you know, I don't know about you. Um, and I, I think chat GPT is pretty good for me. Um, yeah, it's I get stumbled when I have to think and write at the same time. And at school oh, yeah. I was taught think and write, think and write. And I was always like, why, why do I have to yeah. process the thought when it's time for me to talk about it? Why am I not mm-hmm. processing the thought and then taking like tremendous motivated action on it? And then when it's mm-hmm. time to write about it, it almost writes itself. Like, it My does. SEO strategy, for example, impact and ignite. These are yeah. words that I love being surrounded by, but I don't make sure they're in the title of everything I do at the end of the conversation. I make sure yeah. it's part of every bite that I serve and it's part of the energy that I'm bringing at the top. I yeah. want it to be part of yeah. um, the alchemy. And that allows me to live my content mm-hmm. strategy instead of having Absolutely. my content strategy on me. My, my content strategy is have a great life. Get happy with yourself and and be confident when you take up a, a photo that, you know, it, uh, some of it is muscle memory. Some of it is knowing yeah. how to take a good photo. And you learn that piece, by the way, like you know, yeah. most of us did. I was not taught how to be a photographer. Lots of trial and error. <laughs> yeah. um, but I know who I, I know how I want to come across. I know the energy I that I want in there. I know the the giggle or the smirk that I'm looking for. Yes. If you're going to, you know, stop. Makes it look genuine. Yeah. yeah. I want, I want that moment of, of authenticity and transparency. And so for that reason, it's hard for me on LinkedIn sometimes to show up because it feels insignificant because the scroll so happens. So it feels perform like, it's like, yeah. you just want to look at me on, on, on link on Instagram, but on LinkedIn where I can have social audio connected to my resume and I can see who's really who they say they are. And then mm-hmm. when you have that level of visibility, it's like, let's go. <laughs> we tra- love we're it, love now it. I see the 50 people in my life who changed my life and you are connected mm-hmm. to them. Let's go. <laughs> this is a, a jumping off point that I feel, I feel very confident in. And again, I'd be nowhere if it weren't for the collaborations that I've had with other people, it's other people bringing me into their lives with reality mm-hmm. TV, into their worlds 
with businesses and reality TV. Mm -hmm. And I don't change what they're known for, by the way. My job was not make Beyonce a bigger star. My job was cast Beyonce in a film, but also cast someone that would make this film a legacy, not just a small blip in the resume. Mm -hmm. That what that was something I learned from Mm -hmm. the the women who taught me how to do what I do once I got to MTV. Love it. So Vinny, where is your watering hole online? Is it LinkedIn, Instagram, both? Yeah, it's LinkedIn. I hang out, man. It's like the weirdest thing. But like you want these water cooler moments, you got to go to like an office space. So I I loved hanging out at work. Um, You know, I got to work with my friends and my friends became my work, by the way. So so I hang out on LinkedIn. I do social audio events. I ask no need to be on video. You want to connect with me in audio on there. Um, yeah. And then I have a podcast.com is the platform I created because I literally, only have- I ha- literally, I have a podcast.com. Not that <laughs> he has a podcast. <laughs> it's I have a podcast.com. Let's be sure it's for, it'll be in the show notes. That's so I want people to know that he actually has that domain name. That's <laughs> it. I, well, my podcast is, I have a podcast. I spent about 2000 bucks to get it registered and trademarked. So now oh, geez. I have a podcast.com is a place where I go to support independent podcasters like us. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't put ads in my podcast because people don't like them, but mm-hmm. I put ads on my TV show. I have a podcast on TV, which is available on Cox, Comcast, uh, Verizon, and a bunch of other AVOD networks via Bespoke TV. Ooh. And I put ads in my radio show on, I have a podcast on the radio um, that nice. I am able because people listen to ads on the radio. So I like yeah. to play by the rules of the media platforms, not make people bend to their discomforts or comforts yeah. and respectfully know that I'm a guest everywhere I go. I'm a guest in your mm-hmm. room right now as I'm recording, and I'm certainly going to be a guest in the people's ears as they're listening. I take a lot of yeah. responsibility with that. That's why VPE.TV has everything that I talk about. There, there's like step-by-step SOPs, mm-hmm. how to Love get it. the awards, how to get on IMDb. I, I support that because that's, that's the messaging I want to get out there, and I know that you're going to need support to make that happen. Oh, Vinny, I love this so much. We could go on for hours, I'm sure, but let's let people's ears absorb all the good stuff we put in there. Take a breath. Deep breath in. And yeah, and Vinny, this has been so much fun. I'm so glad we got to do this. Seth, you're the best. I appreciate this. Anytime, Vinny. We'll see everyone next week. That was a great show. Hey, if you're enjoying Entrepreneur's Enigma, please give us a review on the podcast trusted of your choice. We're on all of them. And these reviews really help others find the show. Also, if you're getting value from the show and want to buy me a coffee, go to the show notes and click on the link to help me stay awake while I bring you more great episodes to your ears. That's in the show notes, and I look forward to the next episode. Take care, guys. Theme Media hopes you have enjoyed this episode. This podcast is one of the many great shows on the MPN Marketing Podcast Network. You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? T. Adeola hosts a great podcast called Tiny Giants. T, tell us what these fine folks will get out of listening. We are the Creator Economy Show that's about careers, not celebrity. Right. So who should listen to this show are the parents of young people who want to know more about the creator economy and why that's a career path for their children or the young people themselves. Amazing. Where can the young people or the parents subscribe? You can find us at tinygiants.tech or wherever you get these podcasts, these fine podcasts. And you can also find us at the Marketing Podcast Network, which is marketingpodcast.net. You heard him. Go subscribe. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.